Hey everybody, this is Travis and Brandy with Pop Event Company and today we are going to be reviewing event scenes from famous movies and commenting on those things. So oh, here's nice. the breakdown. So the first movie that we're going to review is Dumb and Dumber, one of my favorites. It's the worst movie ever made. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Icelandic Snow Owl. I know it's sick, but this is my favorite part of the movie. These magnificent specimens Okay, so, let's talk about animals, right? Animals at an event. Uh, <laughs> I think in today's modern world, you probably don't need the actual animal at your event. If you do, a handler is a great option. Um, however, I would probably opt to do more technology based because you could show a video intro. Uh, you can be a little more modernized with having animals. So unless you're at the zoo, I probably wouldn't have an animal at my event. Well, if you do have an animal, make sure there's a really good solid insurance policy that accompanies it because anything with talons or anything with claws, teeth, teeth uh, bad temper, uh, yeah. I, think, I think you want to make sure that you've got yourself covered in those instances or anything that could spontaneously use the restroom. Um, <clears throat> so, I think And I will say that I, I've actually had requests for exotic animals at an event and I did have a venue flat say no because of the temperament of the animal. So there are some venues that won't even allow. You mean uh, somebody didn't want a camel spitting all over their guests at, at the wedding? No, says I. I mean, <laughs> I can't imagine why not. One seventh of the snow owl population left on the planet. And God willing, with your help and that of the societies, these wonderful creatures will flourish once more. Thank you again <laughs> and enjoy your evening. Let's talk about attire. So this is obviously a black tie event. I see no black on either of those ties, but I see lots of color. Um, so I think if you're going to attend a, you know, a formal event, I'm not even sure that's formal quite honestly. I don't, I'm not saying I hate it because I think it's cool to wear color but I'm not sure that it's an appropriate attire. So if you're going to send out an invitation, whether it's fundraiser or private event, make sure that you put exactly what the attire is, whether it's a black tie, which this is, or formal. And your response would be? I, I just think, you know, just put an asterisk at the bottom of the invitation that says, don't dress like the Mad Hatter or something like that. I think that'll cover just about <laughs> either of those <laughs> ensembles. Yeah. Although I have to say, I want the orange one. Thank you. I do. Okay, so the next movie is The Great Gatsby. Uninvited. Oh wow, drunken yahoos. Packed into automobiles and all weekend, every weekend, ended up at Gatsby's. So drivers are a thing. Uh, while you may need valet services at the actual event, sometimes getting uh, drivers, especially if you feel like you're going to overindulge at an event, having people on standby, knowing who your Uber drivers are in the community, that kind of thing, uh, is always going to be a good call because the fear of somebody drunk driving like that would terrify me. To be fair, in the 30s, uh, Uber wasn't a thing, but it is now. Modern day. So if you did want someone to drive you around with maybe 20 people in, the, in a convertible, kind of weaving back and forth like, <laughs> like something out of the Looney Tunes cartoons. Uh, just get Brandy to do it after she's had two Manhattans. Are we gonna go there? I think okay. we did. Oh wow, they're just driving all kinds of ways. And I mean everyone from every walk of life from every corner of New York City. Okay, so when he says everyone from every walk of life, doesn't mean they're on the list, right? So here's what I would suggest, and these, these are things that we do that we feel like you have to pay attention to the guest list, right? So having security, having someone where there's a check-in. Um, while you want everybody to have a, a good time, you also want to make sure that the people coming into the party are actually there for the party, right? Or supposed well, to be supposed there. supposed to be there, right? Yeah. 
Good point. So security, gate check. Especially at a private residence. This kaleidoscopic carnival spilled through Gatsby's door. My People don't wear enough straw hats, by the way. I'm just gonna say that. I feel like that's a good look. First impressions. It's the golden era of events. It is. It really is. It, I mean, like, it's, it's fantastic. But the, the, don't yeah, you think, outfits. especially if you're doing something at somebody's residence, you really want that immediate, okay, this is what that party's gonna be about? Yeah, and I think um, making sure that people are, you know, this is obviously, you know, this this event has a specific theme, and, and I think you wanna make sure that people buy into that. Yeah. Um, Set that tone. It's like creating that entryway and that walkway and that photo op, but also even from the entertainment aspect of it. You know, having people that'll be interactive and entertaining at your event. It's very important. And you know, those are the little details that make a huge impact at an event. I agree. You gotta have a chandelier. Gotta buy a chandelier. Coop glass. Uh, there's the coop glasses, yes. <laughs> I was going to say, too, um, just as a quick note, I noticed the, the fellow pouring uh, glitter or whatever out of the giant champagne bottle. Don't do glitter. Yeah, that's a whole thing in the industry. Don't. Although it is kind of cool. Gangsters and governors exchanging telephone numbers. Film stars. Yeah, I feel like ultimately at these types of events, um, you, you see all these different vignettes. So they have poker, you know, or, or whatever it won. They have swimming. Of course, it looks to me like they brought in portable swimming areas, which I can't even fathom the idea of doing that yet until somebody calls me, but you have to consider the logistics of everything, right? So, you know, what's your access to your water? Your, something like this would cost tens of thousands of dollars, probably well over six oh, figures yeah. just probably to replicate that, this... that pool area, just the pool area. Yeah, probably. yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but I do think it's, it's cool that they have all the different vignettes to kind of, um, they're kind of tailored for each individual there, so there's something for everyone to do. Don't you think? Yeah, or at least something to pique everyone's interest. Yeah. The aesthetics of this movie are amazing. Just looking at all the balloons and the orbs and all that, I, I can't, like in today's modern world, this is probably a million dollar plus event. Sure. Easily, easily, easily. Sure. easily. Um, but I love the fact that at the center of it all is the dance floor and the live music because I do feel like that tends to be the focal point. So while you have all these styled areas where people are just hanging out, the focal point of this entire event is going to be the band. And those can range anywhere from, you know, $7,000 and up usually for a full band. But, um, but this is a great, great aspect to any event's live music. If anyone wants to plan an event exactly like this, let us know, because uh, this would be a lot of fun. Sam, have this dance. Oh, you penniless panty waste. <laughs> mm. Oh, did you see what I saw? Yeah. People jumping on that ramp. They were yeah, kind of that. bouncing on the ramp over the pool. Let me just tell you, those are the things nightmares are made of. Things That does happen, too. It does. That so will happen. Capacity is a big thing. Weight strength on those are huge. Having insurance event, you can never have enough event insurance when you're hosting an event. And you want everybody there to be insured, not the guests. And maybe you do. Know, it just depends. But and, and if you do have a private event, it doesn't have to be anything to this scope or magnitude, but if you have a private event at your home, 
that has a lot of moving elements and that's going to have a lot of people and a lot of alcohol. Um, regardless of how well insured your vendors are, I think it's a really, really good idea to take out a, an umbrella policy um, with your homeowner's policy. It can be temporary. Uh, highly recommend it. There's, you can't have too much coverage because people will do you know, dumb things and, um, and they'll get hurt doing dumb things. Well, and just even the construction of it all, you know, just getting the details in there. So if you're building staging and rigging and all those things, you have to make sure that if it does damage to your home, like who pays for that, right? Well, and a lot of those things too, if this were something that had been fabricated on site, um, those things are meant to be temporary and they're meant to be easily set up and removed. Um, so they're not necessarily going to be the sturdiest. So, um, yeah, I mean, you want to make sure that you've got proper coverage. I'm stealing her away, Caraway. I'm going to go in this scene with waste management <laughs> uh, because there's so much paper, there's so much confetti, there's so much trash that's going to be there tomorrow. Um, having a professional cleaning company is probably going to be a lifesaver in this. There are so many uh, commercial cleaning companies that would come in and do this, but for that type of event, you would probably want to go with somebody that would do sporting events, for instance, yeah, like yeah. actually work in a larger capacity, and that would probably cost several thousands of dollars. Yeah, it's worth it though. It um, totally would be. It, it is. I mean, we can do full production event planning that handles all the setup, the you know the event production, the tear down, and the cleanup. But this is a whole different level of cleanup that we're talking about. Um, if you're going to have confetti, glitter, and streamers at your event. We're not cleaning it up. And so, I'd like to suggest never glitter. Hire somebody that, can, glitter. that knows what they're getting into. Glitter is forever. I was in the seventh. Excuse me. I knew you looked familiar. Having a good time, old sport. Oh, the whole thing's incredible. I live just next door. Uh, he sent me an actual invitation. Seems I'm the only one. I still haven't met Mr. Gatsby. No one's met him. They say he's third cousin to the Kaiser and second cousin to the devil. I'm afraid I haven't been a very good host. Cool, bless. <laughs> you see, I'm Gatsby. Fireworks. Yeah. Fireworks are expensive. They're also awesome. They are. But there are things to consider when you want to shoot off fireworks at an event. So will your venue allow it? Um, if it's in a residential area, probably not. Again, insurance. Not to keep beating that horse, but insurance. Um, and then most places, especially if they're in the city, are going to require you to get a permit. They're going to require that you have uh, someone that legally can operate pyrotechnics. Yeah, you've got to get a licensed pyrotechnician with the yeah. right insurance and the right skills. Uh, anything else is a disaster. If you're going to have your cousin uh, Billy shooting off fireworks at your venue, um, I'd like to see after he's had drunk Uncle Frank do it. Yeah, that's just after me. he's had. Uh, you know, a brandy quantity of Manhattans, <laughs> then uh, <laughs> you know, the perfect bad glass. things can happen. So hire a professional, always. Hey everybody, Ty here. This video was going a little long, so we decided to break it up into two parts. But until the next time, make sure you like, comment, subscribe on this one. Tell us what you thought of these videos and what we should react to next. But until then, bye.